So a theory of justification's job, basically, is to identify the source of justification, where it comes from, where we should look for it. Another word for a source of justification is a justifier. A justifier is that which justifies my holding a true belief. So the operative question here is where should we look for our justifiers? And to that question, broadly speaking, we seem to have four preliminary answers. For each theory of justification, an epistemologist is basically saying that when we're looking for our justifier, what we ought to be asking is one of the following four things. First, for most epistemologists, what we ought to be asking is what were the grounds for someone to believe a proposition? By grounds, we mean the evidence itself or how that evidence was acquired. Some epistemologists think that what really matters is what the implications would be for saying that someone has knowledge of a given proposition. What kind of implications those might be could have something to do with morality, could have something to do with whether or not attributing knowledge status to an agent like myself, an epistemic agent, whether that would have some moral implications for me or other people. Could also have something to do with practical concerns, like what I might lose or gain by believing or not believing a proposition. Third, there are some epistemologists who think that what we should be asking is what was the context during which I accepted a belief in a proposition. Most epistemologists are what you could call invariant with respect to the notion of knowledge. They don't think that whether or not I know something varies depending on the context. However, some epistemologists disagree. And for those epistemologists called contextualists, fittingly, they do think that the context matters. Finally, some epistemologists think that what we ought to be asking when we're looking for our justifiers is nothing because justification as such is either impossible or it's unnecessary or it's otherwise a moot question to ask. So here you have your skeptics, for example, who think that knowledge itself is impossible to obtain because justification is not something you can ever have no matter how you want to define it. You can never truly justify your belief. So the question of whether you have good justification is kind of irrelevant because there is no such thing. You also have your direct realists, uh, someone for whom just apprehending something, well, just is to know it. And finally, you have your subjectivists, someone who might say, knowledge? Oh, you mean what your society told you is knowledge. Oh, you mean what your church told you is knowledge. What your school told you is knowledge. A suggestivist does not conceive of such a notion as knowledge, like really being a thing, objectively speaking. Uh, There is nothing to which that word knowledge actually refers except to, say, what my society has decreed is knowledge or what some other group of people, usually more powerful than little old me, has decided is true or knowledge. You know, the sheer number and variety of theories within epistemology, just on this one issue alone, can seem pretty daunting. On the other hand, at least in my view, this is one of the coolest things about epistemology, that there are so many different theories, that there is always something new to learn, some new perspective to think about. And because there's so many different theories, there's practically something for everybody. In fact, as we go through the different kinds of theories of justification, I don't think it's unlikely that you might find something that You may have even already thought of yourself, but just didn't know there was a word for it. Or we might be challenged to adopt something new if we hear a really compelling argument from one epistemologist or another. All these theories are the the hard work of epistemologists sitting down and trying to solve this apparently complex problem of knowledge, um, giving it their best shot anyway. And as we go through some of these potential sources of justification in the coming talks, what I think you'll find starting to happen 
is that many of the different theories of justification that arise do so precisely because of problems found in one or more other previous theories that some philosopher offered. That's another exciting thing about epistemology, and I guess philosophy in general. It's a big, long conversation between lots of different people coming at an issue from very different perspectives, trying to figure out what knowledge is, is it something we can have, and what would it take if it's something that we can, in fact, have. Um, the, the, the big challenge is you want your theory to allow enough stuff to get in that at least sometimes we do know things, right? You don't want it to be too open-ended so that we always have knowledge, which just doesn't seem true, but you also don't want it to be so rigid that we can never have knowledge, which just doesn't sound appealing. Finding that sweet spot is so tricky, and it's exciting to see how many different philosophers have come at this problem, uh, trying to find a way to pin this down. Even if they're not always successful, even if they're not always correct, it's still an interesting ride.